Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at what I think is a very cool product. This is the first of its kind as far as I can tell in terms of cost, easy use, and tracking capabilities. Introducing the MoCap X glasses by a company called Solink. When the rep from Solink reached out to me originally regarding these glasses, I was quite intrigued. But honestly, pretty skeptical that a company I've not heard of before could make something as good as they were promising. I couldn't find much on the company other than one lone page. Since then, their Kickstarter campaign has gone live, which you are able to back now. However, before making that decision, let's dive into these things and starting with the unboxing experience. At first glance, this product packaging is very Apple-esque. With the silver on grey and the kind of nice sleek design, it's not a knock on the company as Apple's regarded as having one of the better unboxing experiences if you're into that. Very professional. And getting into what I was sent specifically, these are the MoCap X as well as their charging case and sunglasses add-on lenses. All of the lenses were covered with a plastic on both sides to prevent any damage in handling or shipping, which was a very nice touch I think, although a bit of a pain to get off. The glasses with lenses attached are 39 grams, compared to my prescription Ray-Ban branded glasses weighing only 20 grams, and that's uh, 1.4 ounces to 0.8 ounces. Now, without the lenses, they weigh 32 grams or 1.2 ounces. Uh, also included in the box, which isn't shown here because I kind of <laughs> didn't really see it at first, is a USB Bluetooth dongle and an appropriate charging cables, one being magnetic for the glasses. The charging case is decent quality plastic, uh, but very fingerprint prone as you can kind of see in the handling there. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a must have add on, however, it being a battery bank and a case for the glasses, it is kind of quite nice. And although they don't seem to officially support having multiple lenses in the case, I was able to put the sunglasses in behind the glasses and still close the case with no issues or pressure being put on the product. That was an unexpected bonus, I think. When wearing them, I would not say the weight is an issue at all. Fitnit may be a little bit of an issue for some, I think, um, if you have a larger or wider face. There does not seem to be much give in the arms to extend out past their max or bend much further. Either way, you can feel the pressure of them on your head. Mainly for me, over top and behind my ears, as well, you may feel some pressure on the nose from the nose pads and arms. Uh, if you have never worn glasses before, typically you can bend or adjust the nose pads to better fit your nose if you find they're sliding down often. And typically you can heat up the temples and the temple tips of the glasses and bend those to better fit uh, your head and ear shape. However, with these obviously being equipped with electronics, you cannot do that here. For reference for all this, I wear a medium face piece or gas mask, a large hat, and a large helmet. I do not personally feel any sort of pressure or fatigue from wearing these for extended periods of time, but I never didn't notice them there. I'm sure over time, wearing them more and more often, like regular glasses, you'd barely notice them. A weird way I have also worn these is to remove the lenses completely, wear my prescription glasses, and then use these almost as a headband just above my glasses. I look like a fool, but at least that way I don't need to get any special prescription lenses or put on my contacts, which I have fallen out of wearing over the past like couple of years now. Typically things like these are an annoyance for glasses wearers such as myself. VR is typically the worst offender. However, wearing them now how I have been on occasion were arguably just as good or better than the recommended experience. They even felt slightly more comfortable that way. Again, not to say that wearing them the correct way is uncomfortable, it was just the pressure aspect. Wearing the glasses properly will net you the benefit of having either the option to use sunglasses or blue light filter lens options. Having opted for the blue light filter style uh, lenses on my glasses for years now, I can say there are benefits to using these. Mainly for me, I find it helps with eye fatigue or that heavy tiredness feeling you get after staring at a screen for a while. Typically, this is bad for contact wearers as they will often dry out your eyes in low light environments staring at a screen. However, I found even when not wearing my contacts, my eyes do get more irritated when looking at a naked screen. I do find there is an adjustment period to using these styles as colors will tend to have a bit of a yellow tint or haze to it. Uh, this quickly disappears though with use of them. 
I would not recommend these for color accurate situations, but for gaming, they are perfectly acceptable. Setting these up were a bit of a chore, however they are in a pre-release state so I do expect some level of jank to it. When I first went to install it, it did not want to install on mine or my wife's Pixel 7 Pro and non-Pro. However, when installing the application to my wife's Tab S7 Plus, it went off without a hitch. I have had issues in the past with certain applications, programs, or accessories not working as intended with Pixel phones. For instance, my GoPro camera app refused to connect to my phone until it installed the, the lab software on the GoPro and jumped through all sorts of hoops to get it to finally pair. So I don't necessarily put this on Solink themselves as they are likely a small company without access to every style of phone out there. As well, I don't believe the Pixel phone line is as popular overseas. Now, moving over to the setup process, it is a little bit convoluted at first. You must enable developer options and then go in and change to allow USB debugging. After that, we go into their application, plug in the USB uh, Bluetooth dongle into the USB-C adapter, then plug the phone and plug all that into the wall. A little pop-up will happen saying that services have started and then you can now unplug the cord and put the glasses into the pairing mode or if you've already had them paired you can do that as well. Uh, once paired you click the button uh, and on the side of the glasses this will turn them off into an inactive or active state. Uh, note that I did find when playing Call of Duty that when you have them in that active state taps will not register on the screen when you're trying to do things like settings or option menu type changes or anything like that. So you have to deactivate or click the button on the side of the glasses before you can make those setting changes and like tap with your finger. Bit of a slight annoyance, but once you kind of understand how it works, it's not that bad. Playing games on Android were actually not too bad on these. Uh, how I would play with them is to do broad movements with the joystick in Call of Duty Mobile, and then do finer aiming with my head. Uh, this seemed to offer the most consistent and least awkward way of playing. It does take a little bit of getting used to as you are kind of retraining your brain on how to play, but honestly I only played the one, like, the one length match there that I recorded, and I was doing pretty darn good I think for my first try of kind of playing with them. Um, not every game will support these however, but in testing of Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG, those both worked. If other games have joypad or mouse control built into the game, they should work as well. For me, the real reason I think these glasses are totally cool are the possibilities to make gaming more accessible to more people. We've all seen the Xbox adaptive controller and other similar attachments for differently able gamers or people with limited mobility. Now, when you connect these to the PC, they are seen as a general Bluetooth mouse input, and when connected, when it's all working, tracking on them is truly fantastic. The mouse was not jittery or moving all over the place like I honestly kind of expected going into this. I, I truly was impressed with this. Sometimes getting them to work with the PC interface wasn't as seamless as I would have liked. Sometimes it didn't pick up any inputs at all, but oftentimes it did work as intended. Um, unfortunately, as of writing this and finally sitting down to like kind of get the footage, I cannot get them to pair anymore on my PC or my wife's PC uh, or on the Steam Deck or my Ally, so I'm just not sure what's going on with it right now. Um, but again, it is in a pre-release state, so I expect these software and firmware updates to kind of keep happening as there was already about four or five put out when I got these and did the latest firmware update. Um, so they do seem to be doing pretty good for themselves so far, however it is very early at these stages. Games I have tried were Microsoft Flight Simulator, Doom Eternal, Remnant 2, Forza Horizon 5, Dirt 5, F1 2022, and Call of Duty. Support for these will heavily depend on how the game is designed. If the game does not allow for mouse movement or aiming, say in F1 2022, you cannot do anything about it at this time, so as such, not every game will be supported. At this point, it is partially on game developers, but partially on the fact that there is no software to go with the PC version. It is simply connected through Bluetooth, and that's it. 
I've already forwarded my suggestions to my rep, however one of them was to include or work on a desktop based application where if possible being able to switch it as a mouse input device or joystick or joypad device uh, depending on the game and how its controls are set up. This could help with working in more games. As well, I feel there needs to be independent sensitivity controls for the glasses versus your regular mouse. The need for this was evident in Star Wars Squadrons, as I often found that because the piloting control works somewhat to a real joystick or a real flight stick, uh, would work in a sense that if you move it to one direction and aim that way, to recenter yourself, you have to kind of snap it back to center. So in trying to do this with the glasses, I would often find myself not being able to kind of recenter myself because the mouse would uh, be way off in the direction that I was looking at to turn because the sensitivity was just way too high or I couldn't exactly control the dead zone of where it would cut off of me looking. So it, playing with the in combination with the joypad in that game and the, uh, the Soul Link glasses, I was able to click in the right stick, I believe it was, on Star Wars Squadron to reset my viewpoint. So having that in tandem with the glasses was a bit easier to work with, but it wasn't the most elegant of solutions. Um, during all my PC gaming testing, I was playing with an Xbox controller as I felt if you were able to use a mouse fully alongside a keyboard, you would likely do that. However, I could still see the same argument being made for someone with limited mobility. They may be able to do broad movements with a mouse to initiate a 360 or a turn, then using their head to aim and get that sweet 360 no-scope. It's a very limited use case, I think. However, I feel the company could definitely steer in that direction heavily. Even for flight sim cockpit uh, type games, this could be a cheaper, slightly more useful, and more integrated option than the Toby Eye Tracker products, which seem to start at almost double the price of what you would pay for a pair of these. Again, so these glasses are in production, but the software is technically pre release, like it's not as ironed out as I'm sure they'd like it to be. However, uh, they were a bit buggy at times, mainly in the connection issues mentioned as well as doing the updates through the odd software. Um, I'm sure it's legit for its use case, but it would have been nice to just be able to update the glasses through their own application. The need for more controls with the mobile application and PC side are apparent. I told them something to consider uh, for the need of an application would be to have the glasses only activate when a hotkey is activated, say left trigger on your controller for when you aim down sights. That way you aren't fighting with the joystick and trying to keep your head perfectly still so it doesn't interrupt any movements you were doing with that joystick. I did play these with Remnant 2 and a joypad as I was having input issues with my mouse and keyboard. Um, they were just delayed and wonky, so this was actually a godsend. Although I did play as a close range combat character, when I pulled out my pistol to do weak point shots or like kind of longer range shots, I was able to do those fine motor control aiming much, much easier than I ever could with the joystick. I used to be extremely good with an Xbox controller, especially back in like the Xbox 360 Call of Duty days. However, as is with many things, you fall out of touch with the, uh, using them and you just don't do as well as you were when you were younger, or when you actually invested more time into it. Maybe that's just me, but either way, it definitely was a benefit of using these in conjunction with a controller. Devices I tried these on again were my wife's Tab S7 Plus, my ROG Ally, uh, which I'm still using exclusively for a month as my only PC. However, I did test it on my Steam Deck and it did connect and control just the same on there. My screen is still broken, so I was only able to use it while docked. But in any case, with both the Steam Deck and ROG Ally having gyro built in, I would honestly recommend that you use those options over these. The ROG Ally's motion controls aren't officially supported as of yet, however there are ways of getting them working quite well as with uh, hotkey access as well. All in all though, I would say that these glasses are at a very good start. With some tweaking, hopefully through firmware updates as well as the hope that they develop an app for the computer, these could be a very attractive option for people looking to add gyro aiming to their setup. However, that software does not exist at this moment and their Kickstarter is live currently. 
Taking this at face value, I would say what they advertise is true. They do help in finer aiming controls in mobile games, with the addition that sometimes works with PC gaming. I have found that when using glasses with a gamepad, uh, in conjunction with the glasses gamepad combo like playing on PC, there can be a slight jitter or delay moving from the mouse control to the joystick. Again, if you were able to activate the gyro on a trigger pull, I think this would maybe work a bit seamlessly as by the time you pull down the trigger and start aiming down sights, the gyro should be active at that time. And then once you let go, then it would immediately cut all controls. Uh, would I recommend you back this product? Seeing as it's not something you can buy right now to own and have in hand, I would say if you're the type of person who does kickstart or fund early projects and are into something like this, I see no reason to believe that your money would be going to waste or that you would never see a product in the day of light. Uh, they are in production right now and they're expecting to ship the products come September of this year. They're currently priced at $89 minimum for the early bird Kickstarter price, a uh, regular price of $139. For the base model, you get just the glasses and the blue light filter lenses. The glasses and the charging case, although I don't feel it's necessary, come to $128 with early bird pricing compared to the full price of $239. The sunglasses add-on is an extra $18. Uh, if you think these glasses are interesting or you might have any use cases you feel that they could excel in or suggestions you might have for the team at Soullink, please feel free to let them or me know in the comments. And although they are primarily marketed towards mobile gaming, they do have the potential to be tweaked and tinkered with on the PC side of things, I'm sure. Um, I, I just hope that the company takes my feedback to heart and really tries to steer into the more PC side of things and like the accessible kind of gamer side of things. And they need, they need to develop a PC app to make this truly excel on there. Now, that'll do it for this one, guys. And as always, I hope you all have a great day.